Welcome to the channel. This is David Hyman, your tour guide in Israel. And this is me, Shiri. Today we went south to the Negev, Negev Desert, to visit our first Prime Minister in his desert house in Sdeboker, Prime Minister David Ben Gurion. In Kibbutz Sdeboker. <laughs> Kibbutz Sdeboker is about half an hour south of Be'er Sheva. Ben Gurion's home museum has a separate entrance than the kibbutz, so while on Road 40, you just look for the sign that says Ben Gurion's Desert Home. This hut was the dwelling place of Israeli's first prime minister, David Ben Gurion, and his wife Paula, from the day they joined Zdeboker, 1953. We're following the footsteps of Israel's first prime minister. David Ben Gurion. Yes, when he came to the Negev to, yeah. to stay here in his last 20 years. 20 years? Yeah. He joined the kibbutz in 1953. There's his house. You see, it's a wooden hut. Tzrif. In Hebrew, we say Tzrif. Tzrif Ben Gurion. Tzrif Ben Gurion. He was born in Plonsk, Poland, in October 16th, 1886. He met and married Paula Munbaz in New York. David and Paula Ben-Gurion had three children, Geula, Amos, and Renana. In May 14th, 1948, he proclaimed the establishment of the State of Israel. I think it's fair to say that Ben-Gurion is considered the father of modern Israel. He led us through our War of Independence and was our Prime Minister for a total of 11 years. So we're in Kibbutz de Boker, founded in 1952 as a remote, isolated agricultural farm. Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion and his wife Paula joined the settlement in its second year. When I saw de Boker, I felt that here a bold and crucial attempt was being made the most critical one of the future of this region that constitutes half of the country. Israel's capacity for science and research will be tested in the Negev. Ben Gurion was a dreamer, but also very practical. He noticed that the Negev desert is empty and decided to move here, expecting that many would follow his lead. So in 1953, they moved to the kibbutz and moved into this wooden hut, which is similar to the accommodation that was provided to all kibbutz members. So I think it's pretty amazing that Mr. Ben Gurion, with all his uh, achievements and all the honor that he received from the Jewish people, he chose to live the final 20 years of his life in a wooden hut, in a kibbutz in the Negev. It's a nice kibbutz. It is so modest. It says so much about this person. He was so humble. The house belongs to the kibbutz and operates as a museum. Uh, there are two bedrooms, a living room, a kitchen, and a very large study. Uh, these plaques explain all the items in the house. Many of them are gifts from people from Israel and from around the world. This was his uh, office. This is his study. Look at all his books. So I think it says somewhere that he would read, he could speak 10 languages. Okay. Can you believe this is their kitchen, the prime minister's kitchen? A little fridge. This is his uh, diet. <laughs> this is diet. No, this is what Paula, Paula fed him. For lunch he eats bread, soup, carrots, 
two, three apples and pears, and some grapefruit juice. That's all? That's all they eat, right? It's not? What is kuchmuch? Kuchmuch? Ah, it's one asian of <laughs> soft cheese, white cheese. Apollo is like more family oriented. There's a lot of pictures of children and grandchildren and family members in Paula's room. It's her closet. This is uh, David's room. <laughs> Mr. Ben-Gurion's room. <laughs> just, it's left just as it was. There's his bed, his shirts, his shoes, his closet, his suits. <laughs> and, uh, slippers. Look at all the books on his desk. What's he reading? Oh, Jerusalem. That was the book that he was reading. There, there's Mr. Ben Gurion sitting at his desk reading the paper. <laughs> he had a lot of files on his table. From the kibbutz, uh, back into the car, drive five minutes south to Midreshet Ben Gurion and look for the signs that say Ben Gurion Memorial or the Ben Gurion Tomb. Paula and David Ben-Gurion. Well, this is open 24-7. You park your car, no admission fee. And you walk along this beautiful path. Question for you. What do you think is written on, the, on, his, on their tombs? Can you guess? See if you can guess. What would David and Paula write on their tombs? Can you give me a clue? A clue? It's a date of something important that happened to them. Yeah, okay. So Shiri says the uh, independence date? Yes. Uh, no, that's no? not correct. Try again. Think of an important date in the life. The marriage day? Yeah. Okay. So wrong. The day that they met? No, wrong answer. Not the day they met. The day they moved to the desert? The day they moved to the desert. Okay, that is an interesting thought. You're going to get the answer in a few minutes because here we are. Look at this location. Wow, overlooking the desert. Shiri, you're dying to know the answer? Yes. Okay, check it out and tell us. The day they came to Israel, the day that they made Aliyah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Paula Ben Gurion, uh, Bet Munbaz, she's, uh, that's uh, her family before she got married, Munbaz. There's her dates, 1892, 1968. And then it says, Alta Arza Betarap, made Aliyah in 1919. And here, David Ben Gurion, 1886, 1973. Alta Arza Betarsav, 1906, made Aliyah in 1906. That's it. That is all that is written on their tombs. You know, there's a custom to place a stone on a tomb. And uh, not sure, <laughs> I really know, we know why, I think it's more, I think it's like, kind of like paying your respect. Yeah, You're paying your respect, put, you put a stone on the tomb. This is uh, where they chose to be buried, on this ledge, overlooking the desert that they loved so much. This is Wadi Tzin, Nachal Tzin. It's really nice. So peaceful. Oh, 
We hope you enjoyed our tour in the footsteps of uh, David Ben-Gurion here in the desert. So if you did, please give us a thumbs up, like this video, and please subscribe to the channel and write a comment and let us know where you'd like to go on our next tour of... Wonderful Israel! Bye everyone! Bye! Bye-bye! <laughs>